Speaking of a little too far, <laughs> I have been begging and pleading and screaming, why don't we ever get to see Powerhouse Hobbs? Where's old wonderful Willie Hobbs? Willie Hobbs ain't been on TV in weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So finally, our prayers are answered, Brian, and they bring Willie Hobbs to TV so they can beat his ass flat in the middle of the ring. Before you say anything, and I'm probably not going to disagree with a lot of it, you want to talk about someone who looks like a star right now? Forget about potential. He looks like a star right now. Yes. What a badass. And that's exactly what I'm saying. They, it's Willie Hobbs, powerhouse Hobbs, against Dante Martin. Because Tony does not have the experience and or the eye to determine, and he doesn't know how this shit works. I, I, they may have gotten him in the ring and let him take a couple bumps to, you know, have fun. They took Dante Martin, who's going to be, has the potential to be a star babyface in a couple of years and matched him up with powerhouse Hobbs that looks and acts and has the ability to be a star right now with a fucking push. And they bring him out of obscurity and let the kid that's half his size beat him. One, two, three in the middle of the ring. Because Dante can jump high. I'm not knocking Dante Martin. I've said he has freakish athletic ability. He can jump and he gets hang time. And you can see there's something there and the people like him. And he's desperately trying and succeeding to get rid of his coma face. He had some facials in this match. He acted like he was mad. He didn't just act like he was a, you know, a medically induced coma patient like normal. But all the marks, including our Booker of the Year, are thinking, well, Dante, 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 because he can jump. He's green as a pepper tree his strikes and his basics. He's only 20 years old. He's a project to bring along. He's not as, he's not as far along in the ring as hook is, but he's a project to protect, bring along slowly. They had him in a tag team. That was a good place to put him and keep him warm without putting all the spotlight on him. Now he's off out there on his own. It's two years away. If, if, if not longer, Hobbs is ready now. He's a grown, adult, badass-looking guy. You can tell he's got the working ability to work his style that suits him, and he's got facials, and he's got attitude. You could give Dante Martin a push now, and you will have a bunch of green matches. You can give powerhouse Hobbs a push now, and he could produce in the ring with any experienced veteran and they'd be good matches and it would get over. But Hobbs is only seen whenever Haley's Comet flies by and poor Dante before he's ready is being put in a position of being on TV every week. And there's going to be more flubs and more swings and misses than there are hits at his stage of the game right now. If they keep putting him in singles matches anyway, they had a jump start in the aisleway. And then did you see the, I won't say it was reckless because Hobbs knew it was coming and that was the spot, but the cross body that Dante Martin hit Hobbs with where they Hobbs had to go backwards over the top and Dante went with him. It was reckless in terms of Dante was coming awful fast and Hobbs is not necessarily Chris Cole to taking bumps and it could have, it looked good. It could have been worse with the injuries they've had lately. Uh, he just hit it and they went. But then Hobbs returned the favor with that spine buster on the floor. And I don't know why you need to be doing spine busters on the floor. <laughs> As transition spots. Anyway, Hobbs got heat on Dante. Dante is not a natural seller. That's another thing. It's not like that he's, it's, it's not Austin Theory. He's not a natural seller. It looks a little awkward. He's got his head down. He's a little green. 
he'll get it eventually, probably, but Hobbs kept in control, but he had to give Dante some things, and for one, that Dante strikes need work. When he backs the guy up in the corner and he's throwing punches, he's he's coming around the sides and making awkward movements with his arms like he's working the strike instead of just throwing a real punch and pulling it up. You don't throw wide, obviously telegraphed strikes in wrestling for punches. You throw a real punch, but you pull it before it lands on its target. Anyway, Starks interfered in the match. At least there's a baby face and a heel here, and that was ahead of most of the matches that they have. But Dante made a kind of an awkward comeback because he wants to do the kicks and the jump ups and the flips and everything. And maybe he needs two stage comebacks because the comeback that everybody wants to see after a baby face has had heat put on him by the heel for an extended period of time. They want to see the heel slip on a banana peel, give the baby face an opening. They want to see the baby face come to his feet and realize that he's got a chance to get retribution and see that in his eyes. And then they want to see the baby face punch the heel in the face a few times and give him a couple of bumps like you're in a fight. They don't want to see you run to the ropes and duck something and spring off and reverse and counter and do -si do Dante needs to come back and hit the motherfucker in the face a couple times and then give him a couple of simple bumps. Boom, boom, boom. You get the momentum of your comeback going. You get the people up. And then in the second part of the comeback, then you can run to the ropes and you can do something that takes a second to set up or whatever. But you're, you're just not getting any momentum when you're running around doing this willy nilly shit. He has a great missile drop kick. Old Dante does. And he used some facials, so he's improving, but this is a process. Then finally, they had a, a double knockout that was kind of awkward because it looked like that Dante was coming off the ropes and Hobbs stopped him with a like a Vader body check, but then they both sold. And Starks tried to interfere, and here comes Jay Lethal. The disappearing man, Jay Lethal, debuted. Everybody was happy to see him. We've never seen him again. I don't think his name has been mentioned. Somebody, several people, as a matter of fact, on Twitter, made a point of sending me tweets with graphics that apparently Jay Lethal, not only a former Ring of Honor champion, but a guy who dominated the Ring of Honor for years at the top of the card, who's still in the prime of his athletic career because he started as a mid-teenager, who is a, a veteran of not only Ring of Honor, but also TNA and national television, who's worked with some of the top talent in the business. They've had him on YouTube, Brian, teaming up with Sonny Kiss. You know, I'm not even going to complain about the Sonny Kiss part. Why is he on YouTube? <laughs> you just said Impact, you know, he was there. He was there when they had a lot of viewers. He was on that show. Yes, he was there when they had more viewers on fucking Spike than AEW has now on either Turner Network. So I won't even get into who they have him teaming with or what they're doing. And I haven't seen any of it, so I don't know what they're doing. But why is Jay Lethal on YouTube? And here in this case, what is this? Was Leo Rush not there? Or is Leo Rush not coming back? Because all of a sudden, the graphic had Leo Rush in it the other day. Leo Rush isn't there. No reference to Leo Rush. The whole thing's built around the fact that Dante pretended he was going to be with Team Taz to turn a week later and go back to Leo Rush. And then all of a sudden, Jay Lethal runs out. So Where'd Leo? The part of Leo Rush will now be played by Jay Lethal's shins. But anyway, so Lethal stopped Starks from interfering, and then Dante... While Hobbs was watching Lethal fuck with Starks, Dante jumps up and hits his double jump backflip moonsault body block barely again. Hobbs had to reach out and catch him like an anteater. And one, two, three. What the fuck? So Jay Lethal, again, one of the most talented young men in the wrestling industry, debuts, gets beat, and goes to the YouTube show to team up with the fucking 
circus sideshow that he signed two years ago when he couldn't get any real talent and is now Dante Martin's fill-in sidekick because Leo Rush ran his dick liquor about what a prick Tony was, and apparently Tony didn't like it. This goddamn fucking romper room daycare nursery school band of bullshit. So, yeah, Jay Lethal, at least we got to see him. He didn't wrestle. He didn't actually even turn to the camera. That's what I was going to say. We're lucky we even saw him. I didn't know who it was. And all of a sudden they started yelling, it's Jay Lethal. It's Jay Lethal. How do you know? I can't see him. (sighs) Hey, if I'm going to give any positives, I want to say two things. You brought up Dante Martin's facial expressions. I think he's been showing more of that. It coincides with the facial hair. I think that really helps because he doesn't look so young with the facial hair. And I just want to once again reemphasize, go back and watch Powerhouse Hobbs. Big mistake to me to have Wardlow punk right before this because it was too similar, I think. That yeah. big guy just destroying the... Not that Punk's a small guy, but he's smaller than Wardlow. Too similar. I would space these out. Have this later in the show, not right after a similar match, but for someone we don't get to see that often, sometimes it's just brooding during an interview. Powerhouse Hobbs. Man, that guy, they gotta do something with. I will say this, and I defy somebody to argue with me or disagree with me. Anywhere out there in internet land, if Bill Watts was still running Mid-South Wrestling, Mid-South Wrestling was still a, a business, and he got Powerhouse Hobbs, in 12 weeks of television, Bill Watts would have Powerhouse Hobbs in the main event challenging for the North American title in the Superdome in front of fifteen to 20,000 people. Can you disagree with that? I don't disagree. Bill Watts would have done anything for a guy like this to have him on the roster. He would have been a big star in Mid-South Wrestling, and he also would have learned how to work in Mid-South Wrestling. And also, he would have been in the main event in the Superdome in front of fifteen or 20,000 people challenging for the championship. And he would have been able to... Because when you take a guy with this look and this kind of talent and these tools, and you know what you're doing... You can make them an attraction in the wrestling business. I'll say something I said on the show maybe a year ago, maybe more. I'm not sure, but I remember saying it. I'll take Powerhouse Hobbs' future over Jungle Boy's future. Oh, yeah. Jungle Boy could at some point have been a teeny bopper idol. Do they use that phrase anymore? He could have been the the, the baby face for the young girls. He could have been the Ricky Morton. He could have been high on the card, um, a guy that doesn't ever win the world title, obviously, but def- wins big matches from time to time, but sells and gets sympathy and has roadblocks put in his path and somehow eventually overcomes the, uh, them um, and gets the last word on whatever heel. And you could keep him high on the cards for a long time. He'd be a big baby face, sell a lot of merchandise, never be the world champion. But but that time, as we mentioned, is rapidly running out because he's never pushed that way. He's never been focused on. He's got a goofy, klutzy partner, and he has the, you know, comedy trampoline matches where all they do is gymnastics, and he's the time for him to be able to learn how to be that Ricky Morton baby face or that Ricky Steamboat baby face or whatever underneath baby face is running out. But no, Hobbs, you can see Hobbs on the main roster in the WWE when it when it was good. Uh, you can see Hobbs in in main events in any wrestling promotion and without too much pretending. So his, yes, his future definitely you know, I'd take that over Jungle Boy's, but Jungle Boy would have had a good one too. If if anybody had got a hold of that kid that could put him in a training program and had fostered him from the beginning and taken these two years and pointed him in that direction of that incredibly sympathetic underneath baby face instead of just another guy with a goofy-looking partner doing gymnastics. <laughs> 